To this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. I'm sitting here in the living room, got a big screen TV in front of me, watching some basketball or b ball, as we sometimes say in uh, here in the states. Um, and my wife's away, so I got the whole house to myself. So I decided to uh, come here in the living room and record this video on my cell phone, my iPhone. Pretty convenient. Um, got a kind of a new concept here uh, for a, an episode today. I'm going to go over like eight um, expressions or words, phrases, or things in English that make English kind of confusing to learn or difficult to learn. Uh, there's phrases, the way we say things, that just makes it unusual. But before I jump into that, or get into that, or that means before I go there, or talk about that, you know, there's three things that you can do for me. Hey, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too. Hey, just like you. Hey, uh, by the way, did you see my last video, or... Depends on when I load this video up. The video I was talking in Spanish, hablando en español. I did that. Hopefully that will give you some encouragement to see that I'm in the same boat as you. I'm in the same boat. That means I'm doing the same thing, trying to learn a language like you. I know the ups and the downs and how difficult it, difficult it can be. And um, So just hang in there. Keep uh, doing what you're doing, we say in English, as my dog barks in the background. And uh, you'll get there. You'll get there. But I'm going to go over some uh, things in English I think you might find interesting and hopefully you'll find helpful and find useful. So the first couple things I want to talk about has to do with uh, English pronunciation and how it can be pretty confusing. So we have, I want to give you three words. The first word is spelled F-L-O-W-E-R. The second word is spelled F-L-O-F-L-U-O-R. And uh, those two words, how do you pronounce those two words? Do you know? Are they pronounced differently or are they pronounced the same? Well, actually, F-L-O-W-E-R is pronounced flower. And F-L-U-O-R is also pronounced flour. And F-L-U-O-R is flour is what you make bread out of. And you know, flour is what grows, say, in the, in the garden. So they're, they're spelled differently, but they're pronounced exactly the same, flour. But then we have the word F-L-O-W, F-L-O-W. How would that be pronounced? Is it pronounced flow, like flour? No, it's pronounced flow, flow. And it's a flow is like the movement of something. The river flows, the water flows down the river, or the river flows down the, uh, through the state. So flow, it's flow. So flower and flow. The second um, thing I want to talk about are three other words. The first word is W-I-T-H. The second word is W I D. Th. How are those pronounced? Are they pronounced differently? Is it pronounced the first one pronounced with, and the second one second one is pronounced with, with, with? Well, actually, they're and when we say these words in English, we pronounce them exactly the same. With, the with. I'm going with my friend to the store. And what is the width of your shoe? What is the width or how wide is something? The width is how wide. But they're pronounced the same. How about this word, W-I-D-E? How do you pronounce that? Is it wid, witty, or wid? 
No, it's pronounced wide, wide. So that's what makes English kind of confusing. Uh, the next example is, uh, has three uh, words as well. The first word is spelled W-H-I-C-H. The second word is W-I-T-C-H. How are those pronounced? Is the first one pronounced which, 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 which? And the second one is pronounced which, which? Well, actually, if you didn't guess by now, the first two are pronounced exactly the same. Which, which? For example, the first word, hey, which uh, sandwich do you want? Which sandwich do you want? The second word, W-I-T-C-H, is which is a type of um, a woman who may cast spells, we say, has may wear a pointed, pointed hat, fly on a broom or a broomstick, have a magic wand. That's a witch, but they're pronounced the same. And this third word is S-A-N-D-W-I-C-H. How do you pronounce that? It's pronounced sandwich, sandwich, and sandwich is just something you eat. It's made with bread, and in, the, in between the bread is usually some type of meat, and we call that a sandwich. So the fourth um, thing I want to talk about is a word or an expression that we use here in English. I'm not if sure if you've heard this or not. If you have, let me know in the comments. But the word is, the expression is called rip off, rip off. So to rip off can mean like to tear something from something else. I ripped, so I ripped my shirt off. I opened my shirt and threw it away. I could rip it off. Or um, maybe I have a bandage, bandage on my hand. I take it off and I rip it off. That could be a rip off. But that's the verb to rip off. But this is like a noun. It is a thing. It's called a rip off. So a rip off is when somebody, or you inv you're involved in an activity where somebody tries to cheat you, especially in a financial manner. They so I'll give you a couple of examples of rip off. Here's the first one. Don't go to that fancy steakhouse downtown. It's a ripoff. They charge you three times as much as it should cost for a ribeye steak. This is a scent. Hey, don't go to that fancy steakhouse downtown. It's a ripoff. They charge you three times as much as it should cost for a ribeye steak. It means they are cheating you out of your money. They are charging you way too much money for a ribeye steak. Three times the normal price. That's a ripoff. Here's another example sentence. I'm telling my friend, you paid $100 for that shirt? Uh, they ripped you off. They ripped you off. I bought the same shirt at Target for $60 last week. Again, you paid $100 for that shirt? Hey, they ripped you off. That means they charged you way too much money. They cheated you. I bought the same shirt at Target for $60 last week. So that's the expression, rip off or to be ripped off. So be careful when you go places, don't get ripped off. Or maybe you're trying to, uh, you want to really improve your English and you find out about a great English course. Hey, it's a deal. You're going to learn English in uh, 30 days. So you buy the course and you realize, hey, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. And you paid maybe $500 for it. Hey, you got ripped off. Or it was a ripoff. The next expression is uh, talk a good game or talk a good game. Talk a good game. You know what that means? Have you heard that before? If you've heard some of these, again, let me know in the comments. So to talk a good game is when somebody talks about themselves, and in a way they're kind of bragging or boasting. Have you heard of that bragging or boasting? They're kind of, we say, too, they're puffing themselves up. They're puffing themselves up, like making themselves 
seem uh, better than maybe what they actually are. Maybe they can do something uh, better than they can actually do it. But it's to say things that sound good or convincing, but may not really be true or may not reflect reality. So again, it says to say things that sound good. You're like, wow, ooh, that's impressive or convincing. Oh, he really knows what he's talking about, but it may not actually be true. So they're talking a good game. For example, here's a uh, example sentence. Jose says he speaks fluent English. Mm, he talks a good game, but when I spoke with him, he was nowhere fluent. Jose says he speaks fluent English. He talks a good game, or he talks a good game, though. That means he, he sounds really good. He sounds convincing. Oh, I'm, su I'm sure he can speak English fluently. Hey, but when I spoke with him, he was nowhere fluent. And I threw in another expression, nowhere, nowhere fluent. So that means, and as far as talking a good game, Jose said he could speak English. He was kind of bragging, boasting, but he was saying something that was not really true. So that's what we say, he talks a good game. He talks a good game. For example, maybe another um, example, your friend uh, is talking to you, hey, I'm, I'm the best the soccer player uh, there is, or I'm the best soccer player on my team. And you go to watch his uh, soccer game and he can't play very well at all. You can say, boy, uh, he talked a good game, but uh, he can't play very well at all. But now I'm going to talk about the expression uh, nowhere. So I said, Jose was nowhere fluent. Have you heard that expression, nowhere? So nowhere can mean several things. It means maybe not very, not very, or not even, or not almost. So that's nowhere. And it's a very, it's a common expression in English. So nowhere fluent means he's not very fluent. He's not very fluent. Or you can say he's not even fluent. He's not even fluent. Or he's not almost fluent. No, he's not very fluent. So here's another uh, sentence, maybe help make that more clear in your mind about nowhere. Somebody could ask you, are you almost finished? And you can answer, I'm nowhere close. I'm nowhere close. That means I'm not even close or I'm not very close to finishing. Here's another example. Somebody could ask you, hey, is your house close by? Or nearby? Is your house close by? And you can say, it's nowhere near here. It's nowhere near here. That means it's not very close. It's not very close at all. So that's nowhere. Because nowhere can also mean, say you're driving somewhere and there's in the middle of the desert. You can say, and you see a house. And you say, boy, they live in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere. That means there's not, not much around here at all. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the expression M and er. M and er. You might say, Gary, what does that, that sounds uh, funny or ridiculous. What is M and er? It's actually a shortened version of him and her. But in English, sometimes when we talk or speak, we leave out uh, or we leave out letters of some words, and we do that a lot with him and her. We'll say "im" and "er." For example, I saw him. I saw him last week. Hey, did you see John? Yeah, I saw him. I saw him last week. I didn't say I saw him last week. No, I saw him. I saw him. I saw him last week. Or where did you see Mary at? I saw her. I saw her at the store. I saw her at the, at the store. I saw her at the store. So that's him. It changes to M. And her changes to er. So be aware of that. And the last uh, expression or thing I want to talk about is the expression, take it from me. Take it from me. And to take something, it can be like I have these papers and 
I say, hey, take, take it from me. That could be somebody, he took the papers from me. But this is something totally different. So take it from me is something that I say when I want to emphasize what I'm saying is true. So I want to emphasize or stress, hey, what I'm saying is true, that you should listen to me or because I know what I'm talking about. Or another way to say it, maybe take my word for it. Hey, take it from me. Take my word for it. Listen to me. For example, I could tell you your car has some problems. You want to take it to uh, John, who's a mechanic. I said, hey, take it from me. You don't want to take or you don't want to let John fix your car. He's a terrible mechanic. Take it from me. You don't want to let John fix your car. He's a terrible mechanic. So those were the things I wanted to go over with you uh, today in this video. Sometimes as I'm walking around or thinking about words or I hear something on the TV or radio, I make a note, hey, that's kind of interesting the way we say things in English or interesting expression, and I make a note of it in my cell phone. So I had a list of these items. I said, that would make a good video. And I'm sure the, the uh, viewers for Learn Everyday English would find these things interesting, beneficial, and helpful. So I decided, hey, this is a good uh, time and it's a good topic to, uh, to make a video about. So uh, let me know if you find that, found this video interesting and if you uh, learned a few things or two, as we say in English, you learn a few things or two, or maybe three or four, perhaps. So again, uh, if you like the video, like the channel, subscribe, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about this channel so that they can benefit from these videos too. And uh, we'll be bringing you more videos like this. Some of the next video I'm gonna make is about a hobby of mine. And I have quite a few hobbies, but like I've said in a video before, I've had to kind of scale back or reduce the hobbies that I'm involved in because of time. You know, I want to devote a lot of time to Spanish and and exercise and other things for my health and but I did decide to uh, learn to play another instrument and I'll give you a sneak peek sneak peek like a preview of what it is but there's an instrument that they play in Ireland or Ireland they play in Ireland and it's called a uh, sometimes you hear it as a penny whistle or a tin whistle and hey, I got some right here. But it's a, and we call this a whistle. And I know when I was talking to my friend in, in Mexico, I think there's, they call these maybe flutes or flautas, but in, in the English in here, we call them whistles. And this is what a whistle looks like, a tin whistle. And uh, it has six holes, a mouthpiece, and you blow in it and play. I'm not going to uh, do too much with this or play this because I want you to wait and watch the next video I'm going to record about this instrument. But be on the lookout, like be watching for the, the video where I'm going to talk about the penny whistle or the tin whistle. And um, I'm going to play a little bit. I haven't been playing very long maybe a couple months, I'm still a beginner, I'm still a newbie, as we say in English too, a newbie, which is a beginner, I'm new at it, so I, I don't play very well at all, but I'll try to play a tune or two, a tune or two, that's a tune is just a song, a song or two for you. So that's enough rambling for today, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching this episode of Learn Everyday English, hey, I'll talk to you later, hey, goodbye.